a recent New York Post op-ed article on Western sanctions on Russia, saying they don't do anything to Russia. We live in expenses and we will freeze. Our industries are suffering while China and India are taking off, meaning they're doing so well. It seems that the sanctions against Russia imposed by specific Western lobbies are developing into a global scandal which are benefiting from them by making billions at the same time that the only ones affected are the citizens of the countries that impose these sanctions, such as our country, while at the same time the Russian economy does not suffer any major impact, while at the same time the industries of the West will also be hit in the future as cheap energy has taken off China and India. Because India and China, of course, are still using cheap energy from Russia. The New York Post article is indicative of the suicidal policy that not only does not hurt Russia and Putin, but instead destroys Western economies, while China and India take off that secure low-cost energy from Russia, while rapidly increasing their competitiveness. The newspaper specifically writes in its analysis that it has caused a sensation in the U.S., after Russia intervened in Ukraine in late February, Western nations, including the United States and Europe, rushed to impose sanctions on the Kremlin. The excuse was to punish Russia for the attack by destroying its economy. President Biden even said that his public statement in his public statement that the goal was to turn the ruble into rubble. Quote unquote. Eight months later, it's clear that that did not work. The rubble is not junk. In fact, is stronger than it was before the war in February, having risen about 23% against the U.S. dollar. Why have sanctions failed miserably? Simply put, the war and the sanctions themselves have drastically increased energy costs. Since Russia's main export is energy products, this means that Russia is accumulating wealth now. In September 2021, Russia's current account surplus, the amount of money Russia earned from its trading partners, was around $75 billion. Today, it's about $198 billion. It's almost three times as much. Sanctions policies have created a curious situation in which the United States and its allies are paying more at the pump and the Russians are sitting on a growing pile of cash. In February, many assumed that if we stopped buying Russian energy products, there would be no one else to buy them and the country would collapse. Well, that was a wrong way of thinking, obviously. Without money in the bank, the Kremlin could not finance the war, but this did not happen. On the contrary, other countries, mainly China and India, have gone ahead and are buying Russian oil and natural gas and even re reselling it, this to the West. You can't have an export ban without cooperating from most nations. What is even worse about this situation is that these countries receive Russian oil and gas at a discount. While American consumers pay a fortune at the pump and Europe faces the possibility of freezing this winter due to power shortages, let alone companies closing down, people being laid off, Russians' allies are consuming cheap Russian power. Obviously, this situation makes no sense. Our sanctions hurt and benefit Russia and its allies. Something has gone, has, uh, has to change. A new uh, benefit Russia and to hurt uh, the uh, allies of the West. Something has to change. A new approach is needed. Since Russia clearly benefits from high energy prices, the key is to try to lower those prices. To achieve this, two steps are needed. The first is unthinkable. American and Europeans should remove oil sanctions. This will allow Russia oil to flow freely to world markets and lower the price. This does not mean stopping the use of economic sanctions against Russia. We should continue to impose banking sanctions, sanctions on oligarchs and use other levers to punish uh, or levers to punish Russian President Vladimir Putin for his illegal invasion. The second step is to increase energy production in the United States. America has some of the largest energy reserves in the world, and it just has to take advantage of them instead of depleting strategic oil reserves. The Biden administration should free up the energy sector and allow it to drill where it needed. The current approach to sanctioning Russia has failed. The ruble is stronger than ever before the, before the war, and Russia's belligerence is rising due to high energy prices. 
American consumers are suffering and Europeans are facing a miserable winter. Let's all step up and lower those energy prices and by all means necessary. And this is by pronews.gr and I've translated this for you from a Greek article having to do with a New York Post op-ed article on what's happening with the sanctions. They don't work. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.